Hey guys, this is CT with CT's Touch Horses forward slash dogs. I'm sitting in my truck, just got done taking my dogs for a ride. I occasionally like to take them, <clears throat> let them run around, exercise. Uh, I got a friend of mine, one of my subscribers, Joe Church. He's got a, started a new Facebook group, Northwest Arkansas Connie Corsos. Uh, look his page up. Uh, if you like what you see, if you're into the Connie Corsos, join his page. It's, 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 even though it's Northwest Arkansas, uh, if you're a Connie Corso lover, I don't, I don't think he would deny you becoming a member of his group. Me and Joe talked quite a bit, and uh, we were talking about protection training and, and obedience training, what to look for when picking a trainer. So, <clears throat> you know, guys, if you've ever watched my page, you know, I, I tell you all the time that I'm not the best, but I'm far from the worst. I don't claim to know everything, but I am pretty knowledgeable in this dog game. And uh, my credentials are all over my page. You know, I don't have no uh, certificate to put on the wall. I didn't go to no dog training school. Uh, kind of blessed, God-given talent. Uh, and then I, I, I research, I watch, I check out other trainers. I pick up tips here and there. I pick up what to do, and I also pick up what not to do. Uh, but again, my credentials is on my page and with my dogs. So let's talk about let's talk about picking a trainer for obedience first. Hey, Q, cut it out. Excuse me, Q and Bull back there. They'll start sizing each other up. But anyway, let's talk about a uh, trainer. So first of all, when it comes to choosing a trainer, I would want to choose somebody that's affordable. So, so check prices in your area. See what, what his prices are. Uh, I would want to pick someone that's conveniently located. And I also would want to make sure that he does the type of training that I'm interested in. So, <clears throat> and when I say the type of training, so if, if I'm not into dog shows and showing dogs, then I don't need to have that type of obedience. I don't need to have that show, that show ring or show floor type of obedience. I want a round the house neighborhood uh, type of obedience. But if I'm in the show ring, then yes, I want that type of obedience. Ah, ah. So make sure that, that they're capable of doing the type of training that you want. Uh, ask to see their work. Ask to see some finished dogs. Uh, a lot of trainers, they just have one way. They can only train one kind of dog. A lot of trainers won't even take your dog if your dog don't have food or prey drive because that's the only way that they know how to train. So if you don't have a dog with food or prey drive, some trainers will recommend you take your dog somewhere else or they'll tell you that your dog isn't trainable, which is not the case. Uh, <clears throat> but like I said, in choosing a trainer, convenience, affordability, and the method and type of training that, that you want, uh, there's a lot of people that are like me. You know, they didn't go to school, but it doesn't mean that they can't train a dog. And there's a lot of people that have went to school and it doesn't mean that they can train a dog. You know, uh, a lot of trainers would try to talk over your head using 
phrases like reactive, um, cognitive, you know, it's not, it's not that, it's not that hard. You know, I tell you guys before a, a, a trash man is a trash man, but, but if he want to make it look like something a little better than a trash man, he can say he's a, uh, a, uh, sanitation technician. He's still a trash man. So when training for obedience, the trainer not only ha has to be able to train your dog, he needs to be able to also have communication skills to work well with people because now you have to, if, if he take your dog and train it on a board and train, in order for that dog to work with you, now he need to work with you and show you how to handle your dog. A lot of people, they have poor handling skills. They can't handle their dog. They don't know how to handle the dog. They don't know how to lead, be a leader for that dog. So uh, I never hardly recommend board and train, even though that would be better for me all the way around. It would be better for me financially because a board and train is about $400 a week at a minimum. And most people want to keep your dog uh, four to six weeks. So now you're looking at $2,400 for a board and train. That's in my area. Now it's probably different in, in different areas versus, like I said, that, that board and train would be great for me. But then what happens is I train your dog and if I don't work with you, then you're not going to be able to, that dog's not going to work for you like he worked for me. And then you're going to feel like I didn't train your dog. So if I didn't spend that amount of time with you, a necessary amount of time with you teaching you how to handle your dog, the dog's not going to work right. And in most cases, if people and, 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 and a lot of trainers are going to hate me for this because it's the truth. If you don't have time to train your dog, to work with your dog, you probably don't need a dog. And like I said, the board and train is very beneficial for us as a trainer, but not for you guys as an owner. If you got a trainer that can only train with the e-collar, he can only train with a pinch collar. Or like I said, food, he's one dimensional. Then that may not be the trainer to go to. So in choosing a trainer, do your research and know what type of training you're looking for. I mean, you may be looking for some behavior type training. And, 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 and here's what I tell a lot of people. I really don't do behavior type training. My behavior type training is prevention. If you start working with your puppy right, then in most cases you won't have the problems later on if you address them as they come about or, or when they're a puppy, you won't have them later on as a dog in most cases. But again, people buy pets and don't have a lot of time for their pets. They just leave them outside, leave them in the kennel and the dog will create his own fun. Some will be, it may be great for him, but terrible for you. So now let's go over into the protection. Same thing when choosing a protection trainer. A lot of people confuse bite work with protection training. Just because your dog has bite work does not mean he has protection training. It does not mean that he's doing protection training. There is a difference and you need to know the difference. Uh, If you're wanting a home protection dog, personal protection dog, don't get caught up in the sport dog training. They're similar, but they're different. A dog with sport dog training does not necessarily mean he's a good home 
personal protection dog. So if you're looking for sport dog training, then find your trainer that, that specializes into the sport dog. If you're wanting personal protection, home protection, find your trainer that train for those needs. And then again, ask for his credentials, ask to see some of his work. Uh, ask for clips of videos and then maybe call a different dog trainers and just see what different dog trainers may have to say. And a lot of dog trainers, and I'm, I'm just going to tell you, some and most will put down the next man. Um, it's a cutthroat business out here, man. But anything that I say, I can debate it. I will debate it. And I can tell you, I can explain why I say what I say. So again, you hear me talk on my videos quite a bit. If this is your first time coming across this video, I got a page CTs, touch horses forward slash dogs. I uh, promote my dog business and horse stuff as well. But again, anything that I say, I can debate it. We don't have to argue about it, but I can debate it. And in most cases, I'm going to give you some facts or an explanation, a logical explanation to support what it is that I'm saying. So again, when choosing trainers, make sure that these guys train to your needs. Don't get caught up in the fancy words. Don't get caught up because he has a dog that will attack a sleeve and you're looking for protection work. That that Don't confuse bite work with protection work. So I tell people that, that don't know. Don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to do your research. Don't be afraid to ask the tough questions. I hope this video helped you guys. Um, uh, I'm going to let these dogs off the truck. And again, check out Northwest Arkansas, Connie Corsos. Thanks, Joe Church. I hope I helped you guys. My number's all over my page. Feel free for anybody to call. If I can help you, I don't mind. Thank you.